ahead and move on to our second story now. Second story is a little more, well, it's a lot more grim. And it was a request, actually. It was on the Conspiracy Iceberg. And this, this was a request from Wesley on YouTube. I'm going to go ahead and read you off a couple incidents here from this chart. These have been verified incidents. They're all going to be... I'll tell you when they're separate. So I should actually make you choose a number between 1 and 26, but that's quite grim. Case number one, woke up boyfriend started beating him, attempted suicide. Well, jumps. Case number three, punched a stranger to bowling alley. Case number five, irrational and aggressive thoughts melt down at work. Case number seven, nightmares, mood swings, attacked fiance with knife. Case number nine, threatened mother with shotgun, locked self in bathroom. Case number 10, became aggressive and odd, attempted to kill self with shotgun, but survived. Urgh. Case number 11, nightmares, anger, and depression felt would kill someone. Case number 12, punched policeman, threatened others. Case number 15, wanted to get key to gun cabinet to shoot husband. Case number 18, wanted to run off porch and hit neighbors in the face and start killing them. Case 16, screaming and kicking in sleep, suicidal, feared, might attack boyfriend with axe. Case number 20, uncontrollable, extreme irritation felt could kill someone and have no remorse. Case number 21, beat her friend, broke doors in her own home, beat on side of truck. Case number 24, choked his wife in a fit of rage and hung himself. Case number 1, woke up boyfriend, started beating him, attempted suicide. Case number 2, agitated, angry acts that patient could not control, hung self in closet. Case number 13, started hitting daughters, came out of room, yelled at them, shot herself. So, a couple suicides, a lot of violence. These are 26 cases. Now, obviously, I could say 26 of anything and read off the worst of them, and you go, oh, man, that sounds dangerous. But it's 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 quite sad. There was the funny one of, that would, I think I skipped it, but where was that funny one that I kept laughing at? Confronting colleagues at work, overturning furniture. So that kind of reminded me of the office. But anyway, so... What we're talking about here is Chantrix. Now, Chantrix is a very successful smoking cessation drug. And the topic on the conspiracy iceberg and the topic that Wesley suggested was Chantrix psychosis. So this is the theory. There's a lot of debate on what's going on with this. Chantrix is a drug that helps you to stop smoking. It is the most successful thing that you can use to quit stop smoking is Chantrix. FDA did a study on it to see if it was healthy. They originally said, yeah, it's totally fine. When their study, it was a fairly small sample group. And the only listed side effects that put you in the hospital. Other people, though, kept studying the drug over the years. And said, depression doesn't... Net, like, you can have severe depression and it not put you in the hospital. You can overturn furniture at your workplace. And it won't put you in the hospital. So they didn't think that was a correct assessment for the FDA. Other people looked into it. And they've said that out of all of the anti-smoking options, Chantrix raises your risk of suicide by eight, eight times. It octuples your chances of killing yourself versus the patch or nicotine gum or any other stop smoking drug or method. There was a study that was done saying, no, 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 no. The risk of killing yourself is actually the same as a placebo. That study was sponsored by Pfizer, the makers of Chantrix. It also raises the risk of heart attacks and seizures. So other than having like this basically psychosis, delusions, possible suicide, killing yourself and stuff like that, people still use it. Now, at a certain point, the FDA said, you know what? We're going to put a what we call a black box warning on this product. And, and it's only on products that have like super severe side effects. So they're like, yes, yes, this, this is a really good way to quit. But we need to put like basically like, you know, they have a black box warning on nicotine saying this can cause mouth cancer. Or this can cause lung cancer, or whatever. But in 2016, this is super rare for the FDA to do, in 2016, they removed the black box warning from Chantrix. And they said, listen, the risk, this is their quote, risk of serious side effects on mood, behavior, and thinking is lower than previously suspected. Five million people take Chantrix. 
And I know I'm just reading off a bunch of facts here, but we're going to get into some interesting stuff. I think that it's all interesting, but 5 million people take Chantrix. And as far as we know, reportedly, there's been 400 cases of suicidal thoughts and 30 people have killed themselves. So the FDA has said, we, it's that the, yes, it can do that. But if 5 million people take it and we have such a small amount of people just thinking about suicide and even smaller amount of people doing it, we're going to take off the black box warning. So a couple years ago, probably like five or six years ago, I was depressed. It was funny because I, I was more of like a mix between anxiety and depression. And it got to the point where I was like, you know, because I was moved up here. I didn't have any friends. I was new in town and stuff like that. And I'd kind of been battling with depression for a while, but not just I didn't. I, a malaise, I guess, would be a big term for it. I remember going to the doctor and I was like, yeah, you know, I just get anxiety a lot and stuff like that. They said, have you ever thought about taking anything for it? And I go, well, I guess it wouldn't hurt. I, I had it. And I don't remember what they put me on. I, it was either Prozac or a smaller version of Prozac. Because he yeah, it was like a half version or something like that. It was like an off something. Because he's like, you're not depressed. You're not going to hurt yourself or anything. And I'm like, no, no, I just feel like, bleh. I just feel like empty. It's not like a scary depression. I just felt off. And a lot of it had to do, it was so funny because he, I he was talking and I go, he goes, what are you depressed a lot about? And I'm all like, I'm depressed a lot about money, but you know, taking a pill is not going to help, you know, pay my rent. He kind of laughed, but what it was, was I was having normal stressors, but I just was not really dealing with them well. I just kind of was ignoring everything, I guess, or, or I let little things really bug me. And it only lasted a couple of months. But he's like, you know, maybe we should try taking this stuff. Maybe we'll see what see what you do with this stuff. And it's so bizarre. It's super bizarre. I took it, and you def your brain chemistry definitely changes. Now, some people definitely need to be taking antidepressants. Absolutely, like they have a chemical imbalance. I didn't have a chemical imbalance. I was just having depression through life stressors. But I could tell that my brain chemistry was changing. I I live alone at this point for the majority of my life. And one of the benefits of living alone is you're constantly talking to yourself. You're very introspective. As long as you don't have the television on all day long, you're playing video games all day long, you're constantly dialoguing with yourself. Your brain is basically working. You're very just introspective. And so I know who I am. And I know how my brain works and how my thought processes are and things like that. So for the first time in my life, I felt something. It was so bizarre. I remember talking to the doctor, but I told everyone this story. It was so bizarre because I'm so aware of who I am as a person, as an entity, that once I, I could tell within a few days that this thing in there was basically changing my brain chemistry. Felt really weird. Felt super bizarre. It would be like if you kept coming home to your house and every day little things were moved. And I'm not talking your car keys, but you come home and your television is in the corner of your room. And you're like watching your room get rearranged over the course of time. That's what it felt like. And the dreams were insane. Absolutely insane. I'm not, I, I hate hearing people's dreams, so I'm not going to tell you about them. But I remember one dream. I woke up, and I was 100% sure that my parents had killed my stepsister. I woke up, and I was 100% sure that I helped cover up the murder of my stepsister. And it took me a half hour, wide awake, to realize that that never happened. But I was 100% sure that that had happened. It was bizarre. It was that that would be considered a delusional thought. I remember just waking up and being like, oh, my God, what if I ever get found out? And then I had to sit and I had to think, no, no, you saw Joy. You you saw her a couple years ago. She didn't get murdered when she was a teenager. The stepdad and your mom didn't do it. Super bizarre. And here's the thing. If you don't have a strong sense of self, I think drugs that mess with your brain can be absolutely devastating and i think that's why they affect people under 18 even more when we look at 
people who do, you know, they say don't take Prozac or any of this stuff. And that's what Chantrix is. Chantrix I'm not necess- isn't necessarily an antidepressant, but it does change your brain chemistry. And the benefit is to quit smoking. And I'll get into that in a second. But when you take this, and again, if, you're, if, you're, if you need it, absolutely take it. I am not saying in any way, shape, or form, do not take this stuff. Because after I got over the two or three weeks, and all of those cases that I read to you, most of them happened. The longest one that happened was 42 days after starting the Chantrix. Most of them happened within the first week to the first month. So very, very short incubation time. If you need to take it, definitely take it. Just be prepared for that wacky, wacky, wild ride in the beginning. And, you know, I have a good doctor. They warned me about all that stuff. And dreams were great. I ended up, though, eventually saying, you know, I don't need this stuff. I took it for probably like five or six months. And I go, you know what? I'm just going to work out. And and that worked for me. I said, I think the fact is I moved up here. I'm not active. I'm not walking everywhere like I used to. Don't have any friends. I you know, just, I don't have any friends and I'm dealing with money problems and stuff like that. I'm just going to work out more. And I remember I saw my doctor at the grocery store and he goes, how are you doing? And I was like, well, you know, I quit taking that medicine you gave me. He's like, really? And I go, yeah, I go, you know, I'm just going to work out. And he goes, you can do that, but you have to treat your working out as your medicine. He goes, do it every day. Take it, treat it like taking a pill. Cause he knew he was also on the thing that he goes, I really don't think you need this. But we'll try it. We'll see what happens. So yeah, he was like, yeah, I, I totally agree. You probably didn't need that stuff. But you got to work out every day, dude. Because you are you are struggling with, with some stuff. And I'm sharing that story with you guys in case you guys ever, you know, experience this or are experiencing this about, you know, my personal journey with it. But anyways, it's also more into this Chantrix thing. You take this stuff, it changes your brain chemistry. They say the benefit of stopping smoking outweighs the possibility of you killing yourself. And when you look at the raw numbers, that's true. 5 million people taking it, 30 people kill themselves. Now, they had the four, what was it, four or 500 people who had suicidal thoughts. It's, I don't see in that the violent outbursts or the yelling at your loved ones and stuff like that. So it's, they're mostly just looking at the, su- the FDA and all that's looking at the suicide stuff. But if you take that out and we start looking at violent outbursts and things like that, is it really worth it to quit smoking? The FDA says, yes, smoking is so terrible. Nicotine is so terrible, which I think nicotine's fine. But, you know, smoking and chewing and all that stuff's unhealthy. But it's so terrible. It's worth taking this drug that at the very least, maybe you just stop smoking. Or you start punching people, overturning furniture, or you might kill yourself. Notably absent in all of this stuff, they remove the black box warning. They have these studies, these dueling studies that are coming out. You cannot take it. As of 2000, this this really should be the end of this argument, really. And they should put that black box back on it and say, listen, okay, maybe you won't kill yourself, but it can make you a little crazy. Maybe you should try every, they don't give you lap band surgery right away. They want you to try all sorts of different diets before they cut you open. And again, that works for some people have to have that. Some people have to have that. But they should do the same thing with Chantrix. I have no problem that the drug's out there, people can take it, but they go, you should exhaust everything possible before you take this. As of 2008, this should be the end of it. The FAA, the Federal Aviation Administration, does not allow pilots to use Chantrix at all. If you are flying a plane, you cannot take this drug. That should be the level of how dangerous this can be. May not make you kill yourself, but it may make you incredibly angry or depressed or sobbing. I don't want a pilot overturning furniture. It really should just be the end of it. But they took the black box warning off the Chantrix. People are taking it every day. And I'm glad that it works for most people. But before you decide to take any sort of drug that does affect your brain chemistry, My advice to you would be, how well do you know yourself? So when those intrusive thoughts, those alien thoughts come into your head, can you deal with them? Or will they sneak in and trick you into thinking they are part of you? How well do you know yourself? 
That was a clip from our daily podcast, Dead Rabbit Radio. Dead Rabbit Radio is available anywhere that you listen to podcasts. It's daily paranormal, conspiracy, and true crime news. If you want to hear the full episode that this clip came from, check the link below. Please like and subscribe. And hit that little bell, too. That does some magical stuff. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.